Hello everybody and welcome to my garden in Rutland. It's a very lovely county and I'm so sorry that so many people will miss out on visiting gardens in Rutland this year as they will miss out on visiting gardens all over the country. Uh, it's very special what the National Garden Scheme does. Last year it managed to raise three million pounds for the most wonderful charities. There are spin-offs as well so our church, for example, holds tea parties. We raised over £2,000 with the teas last year and our church will struggle this year to make up that money. It's wonderful that you can join me. Let's now go and look at three very special gardens in Uppingham. This is Hillside that was built in 1905 by a master at Uppingham School. About eight years ago, when we had a bit more time, we decided to give the garden a considerable makeover. We're going down through the garden, through the woodland walk, which was carved out of a jungle. It had got really overgrown, but it's now a very pleasant walk. If we turn to the right, we can see the top bed that we created and the flower bed on the left. And it's, it's a, nice, uh, a nice lawn and our two magnificent beech trees, which are, are wonderful. If we go on down the woodland walk, a new arch, which has some very nice clematis growing on it. So this is our bottom terrace. This we put in as part of the makeover about seven or eight years ago. Uh, originally, the lawn sloped up to the, where the top of this, this terrace wall is and was fairly useless uh, and it's, so we dug out about four or five feet of, of uh, earth and uh, put in the retaining wall, the terrace wall, which um, has been a very big improvement. These are our papavas which uh, are very glorious at this time of year. And on the left hand side are the Iris Siberica, which again is uh, doing very, very well this year. This is the pond that we created as part of the makeover. It's fed by a spring at the back, which means that the water is uh, very clear and fresh and we are able to grow watercress. This is our spring that rises just here and actually goes right through Uppingham and down to the other two gardens that you'll be seeing today. It runs all year round and is, uh, has very fresh clear water. And our hostas grow very well uh, round about it. This is our wild flower garden that we planted for the bees and the bees absolutely love it. And you can see, see the view down our, across our paddock and the bees have a wonderful time with the wildflowers and, and in the paddock and so do the sheep. This is where the vegetable garden starts. We try to grow things that are uh, difficult to obtain or taste much better when they're fresh. These are our fruit patch um, gooseberries which always give a very good crop. Well, about three years ago, when we purchased Robin Hill, our main ideas were to to have a, a garden that was involved with, with facing south and having um, a quiet country feel. The garden was pretty much an open palette. So the state of the garden was very plain. It was, a, as Cathy says, it was a, a clean, uh, clean palette. The, the bottom of the garden was completely overgrown and we realised there was a stream there so we wanted to uncover that. 
Um, but really, as a gardener, to design and, and implement a garden, it was incredibly easy because all we had to do was make space for plants, and that's what we did. And the first thing one really has to realize about this garden, it's a beautiful south-facing site. The garden is actually quite small. It's only about a quarter of an acre. But we have this amazing borrowed landscape because we look out on the field uh, ahead of us and uh, you, you, quite often there are sheep and lambs there which make it so pretty. Uh, and also we have a wonderful view across our two neighbors gardens in that direction there which gives this amazing um, tree landscape. You, you really feel you're in, in a much bigger space here than it actually is. So we're incredibly fortunate to have what we have around us. The thing we love is the, is, are the terraces. We created these two terraces, which mean that we can be in the sun or in the shade more or less any time we want. I would say one of the highlights is for my swing that I received for, uh, from Andrew for a 70th birthday present, and I use it every morning. Luckily, the neighbors can't see me uh, swinging away in my white nighty. We have a Labrador retriever, George, who needed a water spot, and so we created the, uh, a pond. But that's worked really well. We, uh, we've got a few plants growing in it, and it's not exactly um, uh, the most pristine because George uses it as, as a little swimming pool three or four times a day. We came here in 1992 and um, the house was built in 1948. The first owner, um, who was the master at the school, laid out um, the, the current framework of the garden, all the large mature trees you see around or planted by him. I always come out sometimes on mornings like this and feel so grateful for those courageous plant collectors from earliest centuries who brought in many of our plants. I mean, just along here, for example, from many different countries, um, we have the passion flower from South America and um, the grevillea from Australasia, um, the, the tucrium, the germanda from the Mediterranean, um, the, the um, salvia, from Mexico and of course the wisteria uh, come from China and Japan and this is the Chinese one. Our style of gardening is to try and use a wide variety of plants. Now for example here I've tried to bring together a group of plants that don't necessarily rely on flower colour uh, but form and texture. So you've got the contrasting shape of the variegated pittosporum above and then below it the golden choisia and to the right the lovely foliage of the cardoon and, and to the left this lovely um, uh, acer, the bronze coloured acer. So we do try to uh, be as sustainable as possible in the garden. Um, for example, the lawn looks well mown today, probably more than usual, but uh, I do encourage lots of little pockets of uh, wildflowers in the lawn, especially around the trees. Um, and we have um, bluebells, as you can see at the moment, and a good crop of daisies and buttercups in the meadow area and cow parsley. 
Well, the Streamside development here, we carried out about three years ago. I think this is its third summer. And uh, we planted a new wildlife friendly hedge. So that contains all British natives, about six different forms and makes a wonderful green pathway as well for wildlife underneath. The plant at the end with the pink flowers is the ornamental rhubarb and a splendid plant for growing along waterside. The current highlights are the orange flowered euphorbia, euphorbia griffithi, and the blue iris, iris siberica. This is a little project we did just a few years ago. It's quite a small space, below, slightly below the main terrace. Uh, and we put in um, a small lion fountain um, against the wall, so you have the sound of the, the water running. And then climbing plants here, like this uh, climbing hydrangea, and baskets for seasonal color, and the two aces, and the ivies, the rosemary above, and there's a climbing uh, clematis Hagley hybrid, which will be flowering later in the season, and the clip box. And so there are lots of different elements that go to make up quite an attractive little space. I do hope you've enjoyed these lovely gardens. Thank you for joining me. And please remember that the National Garden Scheme really does need the funds this year, so please give generously.